and this is the team, Hadi Mokwej, we have Hamad Azam, we are Hamad Azam. So basically, today, we're going to be talking to you about a serious problem. So, the schedule for our presentation today, we're going to start off with an introduction. The, pro the problem itself is a big problem, we're going to discuss it in detail. So we're going to go to the solutions, on-market solutions, other things we tried as well. We're going to go into a demo, and right after that, we're going to start to talk about how we're going to go to the market, the GTM plan. Then, we're going to talk about the tech, the geeky stuff. Right after that, we're going to talk about um, the interest and feedback, and then we're going to go into Q&A. So, our team, Horizon, uh, sorry, Oasis, with our project Horizon, it's composed of Munir, our system architect, right over there, yeah. Hamad Azam, PR Marketing, very active today, you'll see why. We have Hani McWage, Web Architect, myself, I'm handling the business for this. So the problem, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in a video. There's no way on earth I can actually show you a problem without being a person in that, in that chair. So let's watch this video together. Let's, uh, get it running. 
It's hard because manufacturing costs always put the prices up. Availability will always be an issue. We tried image processing. We went into image processing at the beginning. We also tried that many times. Processing power is consuming to the PC. You start getting lags. It wasn't that user friendly. Physical factors. Light. Someone passes by, someone turns the light off. Someone's looking at the screen with you. You know, we've seen solutions where you blink to click. If someone's watching over the screen with you, just clicks his eyes, that's it, he's clicking now. Disturbance. There's a lot of physical disturbance out there that, that would make the camera go crazy sometimes. So, what are we gonna do? We looked at the Nintendo Wii, amazing solution. We were like, okay, this is an interesting thing. We're looking at it at the beginning, it's cheap. You can get it on eBay, a legal clone for $15. IR Labs, you can get them anywhere. Basically, these two, you can get them literally anywhere. Go to any gaming store and tell them I want a Wii and get a broken remote control from a TV and you have an IR Lab. With complex software, we will give the PC the movement that the patient needs. They'll, they'll start controlling the PC with their head movement. Now, something that's missing on the market, an app store. There's not enough applications for quadriplegic patients. So what we're gonna do now is add an app store. From that app store, these patients here will actually start consuming applications that other developers are putting online. Mobile communication. We're gonna make it very easy. We wanted to utilize any normal mobile phone to make phone calls with only head movement. So, let's take you to a demo with Munir. So basically, the application's on pause, and let's create it. As you can see, he has a small wire led on the cap that's clicked up there. Nintendo Wii connected to the PC. So with, with these two combinations and a simple stand, he's now controlling the PC. Now, I would like to emphasize something. How is he clicking? Everyone's asking that same question. Clicks, we tried a uh, normal clicker next to the mouth. Patients that we were working with, like Fatima was like, I don't want something near my mouth. All the patients we were working with was like, get that on the side, we don't need it. So we, we implemented something like auto-click. Auto-click basically, if you stand somewhere for a certain amount of time, it clicks. So when he's on edge for a while, then O, if it's clickable, it's gonna click. And now you have an autocomplete keyboard. So part of the solution is that you have an autocomplete keyboard as well, which you don't get online. There isn't any. Why do we implement that? The problem with autoclick, it waits for a certain period of time and then it clicks. If you're gonna type a whole word, word, it's gonna take a while. So what we did here is just basically continue the word for them. So if you're writing something like congratulations, just write con, it's gonna get up there. Click it really fast, we're done. As you can see, he just posted something on Facebook. Now, we're gonna take you to the App Store. Now, when we were building this, we were thinking about Fitz Law. Fitz Law says the bigger the button, the less of the movement to the mouse, it's a better solution. So, using Windows Live, it's gonna log into our system. And then the App Store will only have four things right now. So, this is based on Pivot Viewer. Pivot Viewer, the, the nice thing about it is you actually control the size of the buttons. We have big buttons there, and by doing that, you can see that it doesn't require a lot of head movement. They can get to the application they need. Whoever wants to post an application can post it there. Okay, so that's a demo. That's a short demo, and let's go on. Back to the presentation. The go-to-market plan. This is a nice gadget. How are we gonna get it there? Everyone's telling me you're utilizing something that's there. How are you gonna play this right? So, first thing, you need good packaging. So the first package we have is on the left side. The package we call is premium. You can get a lot of things here, the software plus application licensing, uh, the app store, Wii mode, IR LED, USB power. I'm going to say IR LED, this means it's nicely packaged. You have the USB power for the Wii, the Wii mode stand, the USB mobile modem. So, I just said USB mobile modem. And we also said that we have phone calls. So let's see that now with Monir. So we can see how the full package works. We just saw a small demonstration. So, he's gonna go to phone access, he's gonna start the clicker again. Phone access. This utilizes a normal phone he has right there. It's a simple Nokia phone. It's not that smart phone, it's just a phone. So, he's gonna make a phone call using his head movements. The phone's on speaker. Your okay. call cannot be completed. So basically we're just dialing the number into him. We don't have phone service, so we're just uh, gonna show it off so you can hear that it actually calls. Second thing, a lot of patients told us we don't have phones. What do we do? We're like, okay, fine, don't buy one. We have partnered up with a telecommunication company in Jordan. We're working on something called the Huawei E 
173. It's a modem with a GSM card. Using that now, you can send SMSs, receive SMSs, send and make mobile calls. You basically have control of the PC like a normal phone. So that's what you get when you have the premium package. Now the light package. That's the basic, you have the basic controlling functionalities. This is going to allow you just to control the PC. You have the Wii, the IR, and the software. And then you have the developer package. This is the point where partnerships could happen. We're doing what we're doing now is calling different agencies around the world and telling them, we'll give you the software. We'll tell you how to build the hardware. Let's get, it, let's get this done and put it on every market. It's just as easy as getting a Wii. All right. How will we sustain our business? We have here five pillars that we're going to hold our business up on. The software, licensing, resale from the hardware, donations. This is something we actually are triggering. We're going to get to that when I get to uh, feedback. App store percentage. We're going to start taking a small percentage of developers that are putting their applications online. And we will not be charging any patients that will write code. So yes, we are making a plugin for patients to start writing code on Visual Studio so they can start selling applications around. And then we have CSR. We already contacted Alamex, one of the biggest shipping companies in the world. Omni and Zane are telecommunication companies and they're battling now and we're trying to get the best deal out of them. So the roadmap, 2010, it passed by, it was mostly research, initiation, development, prototyping. 2011, that's what we're looking at now. First quarter, the second quarter, we had the marketing and PR planning. It has been, we finished there, initial business plan execution. And now we're going to start getting resources, start packaging phase, and we're going to go to market hopefully by Q4. Here's an example of something we're trying to figure out now. We're trying to get a deal through. Armix wanted to build the first 1,000 devices. We said we're going to do that for you. So they tried something called SmartNav. The device cost nearly 1,000 to 1,500. Do the math. That's a million bucks. So we said 100, take, we'll give you the device for 100. Put 1,000 next to it, you have 100,000, you have literally 1,000 devices, they're gonna put them in labs, and patients can access them now. Tech, how is this thing built? So basically, simplicity. Simplicity is a key factor here. At the same time, there's a trick of complex software. As you can see, there's IR LED. It transmits to the Wii remote its position. Now, if you remember in the beginning, I said that image processing had a problem, where the processing happens on the PC. Here, the image processing for infrared happens on the Wii mode itself. What we do is we connect, we collect data telling us where the head is in space, and then we process it even further on the PC, but it's less, it's like nearly one-tenth the processing you need with image processing. So, the Wii mode does the first initial processing, sends it through Bluetooth to a processing layer on the PC. Right there, we process it, and then we do noise cancellation, cursory movement, and that's where then the application level starts and you have all these gadgets, the auto clicker, the mobile communication, the advanced keyboard and all that. The stack is built in a modular sense. We don't want to just create an application put it out there. We want people to actually start contributing and we want to try different hardware with our application. So we start off on a Windows 7 base. We utilize Windows 7 API, the Wiimote driver. We have the Horizon Wiimote, the driver integration, that's something we wrote. That's where you can actually start integrating more detailed sense of the hardware, dot .NET framework, and then you have the Horizon API layer. This is where other application developers can actually link in. You have the WPF, the front end, the user experience area, and then you have the last level on top of the application. You can also see this Microsoft Speech API. Yes, we're using Speech API to speed up the process. So if you say something to the PC, you actually start speeding it up. Windows does support some of that features, but there's some missing that we're adding. SQL Server 2008 and ASP.NET for the App Store. It also has Silverlight, Facebook API, just in time for it, just in time compiler for the um, collection for Pivot Viewer. So, interests and feedback. This is something that we were really excited about a couple of days ago. Queen Rania actually gave us a nice uh, tweet saying, like, congratulations, keep up the good work, and now we're contact, uh, trying to contact her for donations for the first run. Mr. Osama Fayyad, this guy is a big head that used to be uh, at Yahoo. He was one of the VPs at Yahoo. He said he was personally interested in this thing when I, was, when I met him in a course in Empretech. We have the council for the uh, dis disabled affairs in Jordan as well. He said that this kind of device could help patients reconnect to the world. And we also have Aramix, the head of Aramix CEO, Fadi Landur. 
He literally wrote a tweet after seeing one of our presentations in Jordan saying, give me the details, let's start implementing. We're actually starting to contact them for the first 1,000 devices. And remember the sad face that I showed you at the beginning. I want you to see this. Uh, I want you to see that face now. This is the thing that drove us into continuing every day. Um, after a couple of patients. that we did today. This morning, we woke up and we decided we're going to do something crazy. We have a small documentary for you. Good afternoon, my name is Evan Block. I'm the patient care center director for a spinal cord injury at the James J. Peters Medical Center. Uh, today, we were able to use the Horizon, which uh, is able, uh, which helps our uh, patients uh, uh, navigate the computer and what we did find is that it's very optimal for our patients. You, you're an honest opinion. It doesn't have to be like bridges. Oh, no, sure. Yeah. No, you're on. Oh. Um, so the Horizon, um, it's a lot more natural moving than the other products I've seen and it seems really user friendly and it's cheap, which is nice because everyone can afford it. I like the idea of the hat. It's not very awkward and uh, I tested it and you know, I slipped right through all the applications. Uh, uh, probably can, you could probably surf the web with that application as quick as you could with your hands. Uh, uh, I think that this is one of the greatest things that you can do for a quadriplegic because it can give him a lot of freedom to explore the computer and get on the internet. The, what, what was the best part in your experience? Uh, the best part of this is that, the, well, actually, the delivery of uh, not, not being able to, uh, to use it without using your hands. So I think that's that's one of the greatest things that you, that you can have with this. And right now, I would have to say it's probably the best system that we have for our patients. And by that, I mean quadriplegic. Thank you. I want to stress the very the liberty of using the PC without moving my hands. This thing actually got us all emotional. We were actually shocked at the footage when we got it. We ran back to the hotel going like, guys, let's put in the video. This is amazing. Okay, so questions? We hope you have the answers. <laughs>